I'm here this afternoon with uh, Ryan, Brother Ryan J. Flynn from Ancient York uh, Lodge Number 89, the Grand Lodge of New Hampshire, FNAM. Ryan is a Masonic artist, and some of his newer works are quite interesting, and he's going to describe some of the uh, works that he has brought with him today. Ryan, would you tell us what's on the easel right there? Uh, yes, uh, one of the things that I wanted to bring into masonry was uh, patents. You hadn't seen them in quite some time. If you look at the patents back in the 19th and early 20th century, there were these grandiose, well-designed certificates. We kind of just use photocopies of them right now. So I decided to do uh, middle-aged middle, st middle style versions of them. This is my Celtic one. And the way I do them is I design them by hand, scan them into a computer and work with them in a computer to age them and get them ready to print. And I print them using uh, G clay printing, which lasts technically forever. And then once I get the prints, I hand accent them further with 23 karat gold, uh, silver, zinc mix, and copper. And uh, if you can see it, uh, when the light hits it, you'll understand why they're called illuminated documents because that gold really pops and can be seen from quite far away. Um, and the reason I kind of did this is that, um, for example, in my lodge, I hand these out to my new master masons. And it, it just gives you a sense of pride in what you've just accomplished further than the degree. And um, it's something that you can proudly display. And um, doing it in a way like this kind of keeps the cost down. I really don't mark them up that much. And um, makes it so you can give this to someone who's going through your lodge or you know your parents or your son or um, anybody who's about to become a master mason. Okay, can we see something else that yeah. you brought with you today? Uh, this is an interesting piece because I don't know where I'm going with it yet. Um, as you may know, I started, my first Masonic artwork was a pair of fakes or faux stained glass windows in Nashua, New Hampshire, and I decided to take that a step further. Right now I have my two windows up and this big um, York right arch in the middle of it, and I had this idea that a rose window would look fantastic in there. So I came up with this design, which is a sketch version of this final piece. And what the design is, is a Master Mason tracing board. I have the emblems of a Master Mason going around the outside of it. Um, on the inside, I have the emblems and, and symbols of the officers of the lodge. And finally, the final emblem and the letter G in the middle. And my idea is to put this in a shadow box. And while we're giving the Master Mason history, uh, and get to the emblems, when we discuss an emblem, it would light up individually and eventually, once you're done with the, the degree history, the whole thing would be lit up for the, for the candidate. Um, I'm not, I haven't presented it to my lodge yet. <laughs> I'm still working on prices. But the one thing I want to say about this design is I designed it for masonry. I didn't design it for anybody. So if a lodge were to come up to me and say, we want to put that in our lodge, um, I will happily give you the design. I, I just want to see it done. <laughs> um, I think it, it could be a great uh, addition to the craft. So that's where I'm heading with that right now. And you say the easel that you have there, you have some writing on it. It's done in reverse, yeah, reverse uh, writing? So I studied art history and I was always fond of the Renaissance. I studied in Florence and I uh, got to see a lot of these uh, codexes, which were basically notebooks by artists that um, put all their ideas and observations in there. So I like to create them on my own and I incorporate some of the things that they did back then with a slightly modern twist. So with this note form of the window, I did some reverse writing, which Da Vinci was very famous for, where I write some notes, some ideas, like I wanna incorporate the flower of life into the background, um, you know, make sure that the Euclid has magic squares that um, resemble uh, certain numerical orders that will flow in masonry and I even sketched out a magic square up here and um, with my art especially my medieval styled art I always like to hide stuff in there so hopefully if someone was to purchase this or if someone just to come up and ask to look at it from me um, it's it's something that you can actually look at for a couple hours and try to find out new stuff because I can guarantee you there's 
codes in there, musical uh, musical notes, a whole bunch of other stuff that you wouldn't see right away. Okay, and have you got something else you can put up on the easel? Yeah, um, this is a recently completed commission. Um, this was done for a brother in New York uh, who wanted a medieval style York Rite uh, design. He gave me the text uh, regarding this oath and kind of an idea that what he wanted to do. So I designed a medieval style um, a design to go around it. And I incorporated scenes from uh, the Templars. I unfortunately am not a Templar yet, but I'm working on it. Um, but this is stuff that's common knowledge through history. So it's more of a historical Templar piece more, rather than a Masonic Templar piece. But once I go through the degrees, it'll it'll incorporate more than that. But I, you know, I have the, the two knights on the horse praying, um, praying in a church, a little nod to my history in Italy as I incorporated the dome from Florence into the design just as a kind of nod to myself. And as I'm a marked master mason, I'm about to go through my Royal Arts degree, I put my, my mark in there as well. Okay, now you have some interesting stuff over here on the table. We can come over here. You have the opening charge. If we yes. could, if we could see that. So my my absolute favorite uh, piece of ritual is the opening charge in that in Nashua, the, the ways of virtue are beautiful. Knowledge is attained by degrees. Wisdom dwells with contemplation. There we must seek her. So um, what I did is I came up with a uh, medieval style again version of the charge. And um, I wrote it out because it was a semi-public. It was already written out in New Hampshire ritual. So I decided that it would be a safe place, uh, a safe thing to do. Um, but I incorporated a lot into this. Um, a Fibonacci sequence, uh, a spiral, and my favorite symbol that's in this is if you look at this pattern on here, you'll see a couple of oddly shaded circles. And what that is, is the, their notes, and it's the opening uh, overture of the magic flute which is obviously Mozart's Masonic uh, work. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm not going to get into because I really want people to dive in and look, because I can guarantee you, uh, when I, I've explained it to very few people and they, they get wowed by it. But I'm very proud of this piece. Um, the first one that I did was for a brother who recently passed and uh, was a huge influence on my life, Brother Jack Kanan. He, uh, I gave it to him when I was in the hospital after a stroke. And um, it's just a very uh, personal and emotional piece for me and uh, one of my favorites I've done so far. And, and you have a, uh, a, a, what we would call a certificate. Yes, so along with the Celtic one that I showed uh, before, this is another one. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the gold on it yet. Not yet. But um, this is called the Regis Pat. Uh, once again, it's a Master Mason certificate done in the same printing, the uh, G clay, so it'll last forever. Um, and I have incorporated some very familiar scenes of Masonic ritual. Um, I've also incorporated the four tenets of, uh, excuse me, the four cardinal virtues of um, masonry around the compass and square down the bottom. And the reason I call it the, the Regis poem is, as I'm sure you, most of you are aware, that the Regis poem is the, one of the oldest Masonic texts that is out there. And in extremely small lettering, I've incorporated it into the border so you can read it in a spiral manner and uh, read a significant part of it. I couldn't fit the whole thing in there. And lastly, we have on the table a, uh, a, a trifecta of the middle chamber. Yes, this was my first um, artwork other than the windows. Um, while I was junior deacon, I was learning the middle chamber lecture, and I came up with um, this design of three codex pieces while I was working on it. Um, they co uh, correspond with three main sections of the middle chamber lecture. We have the, uh, the, um, the pillars, in which I've written in pig pen cipher, the cipher that Masons used to use at the turn of the 20th century and before. Um, the dimensions and the little nuances about what the pillars stand for um, in here. Then moving from the pillars, we've got to the stairs, um, which up here, um, 
negating some very sensitive words and uh, <laughs> parts of ritual that I shouldn't be copying down. I uh, incorporated some of the numerology into what the numbers stand for. And finally, geometry, which uh, seems to be the piece that I'm well known for right now. Um, I incorporated some sacred geometry like the, uh, the Flower of Life and um, some more reverse text and wrote what geometry stood for back then. So I go through the, the um, not only geometry, but the, the different uh, orders of architecture and some other stuff that also is hidden in there. Well, you certainly are a Masonic artist of distinction. Uh, you have some of these items for sale, do you not? Yeah. Um, Your website? Yeah, I have my website. It's ryanjflynn.com. Um, all of these prints are available to view and um, share. I try to keep the, uh, the resolution on it as high as possible because I, I try to make art that is, uh, is able to be used in discussion and promotion of Freemasonry. So uh, please go there, take a look, uh, shoot me an email, tell me what you think. Um, I also have a link there for commissions. Um, I'm trying to do more and more commissions and soon tracing boards. And the way that I like to do them is a way that gives back to the lodge. So if you commission a piece from me, I will sell prints and give you proceeds of the, the, uh, the prints back to your lodge. So it could be a win-win situation. So a commission is any work of art that a brother would like to have particularly made in the, uh, for his what he likes. Exactly. I had a lodge in Frederick, Maryland, um, well, excuse me, a brother of the lodge in Frederick, Maryland, uh, commissioned me to do a circumpunk piece because they really liked that piece of ritual. And um, I did that for him and actually drove down to give it to him and presented it to him and they've been beyond thrilled with it. Um, and it's, uh, you know, with any work of art and not just mine, if, if a lodge commissions an artist to do something original for their lodge, um, it'll really, I, I believe it brings a sense of pride to your lodge and it, it's an identification uh, of your lodge and it's something you can, uh, you know, gather around and be proud of just like in the Middle Ages what they did with churches and, and sculptures. So um, I truly try to promote the arts as much as possible in the lodge. Uh, my lodge is, has an artist going towards the east so they're going to get used to talking about art. <laughs> but. Um, I'm always available to discuss if you have ideas for, for lectures or any educational things. I'm more than willing to help. Well, we want to thank you uh, for this uh, 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 permission to tape you today, and I hope and wish you well in your endeavors in, in the artistic and Masonic world. Oh, 